The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming is a 1966 comedy film that captures the chaos following the grounding of a Soviet submarine off a small New England island during the Cold War. The movie stands out for its humor and the way it shows the fear and friendship between the Americans and the Russians. It's a classic because it makes us laugh and think, and it shows that people are the same no matter where they're from. Now, let's talk about what makes this movie special. It's funny, it has moments that will surprise you, and even some that might make you sad. But it's these ups and downs that have kept it in the hearts of viewers for so long. Do you remember the first time you watched this movie? Maybe it was with family or friends, and it left a lasting impression. We'd love to hear about your favorite moments or memories related to this film. Share your stories in the comments below, and let's relive the laughter and lessons this movie brought us. The 1966 movie, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming is a comedy that tells the story of a Russian submarine that gets stranded near a small New England town. Its impact lies in how it presented the possibility of friendship between Americans and Russians during the Cold War, a time when the two countries were hostile towards each other. The film's humor and message of understanding helped ease public fears during a tense period. Today, it remains relevant as it reminds us that despite differences, common ground and kindness can be found between people of any nation. The movie's ability to make people laugh while promoting a message of peace has ensured its lasting popularity. It shows that humor can be a powerful tool in bringing people together, which is a lesson that still holds value in today's world. The film's approach to a serious topic through comedy makes it a memorable and significant work in cinema history. It continues to be enjoyed by audiences for its lighthearted take on a serious subject, proving that laughter can be both entertaining and meaningful. In the landscape of American comedy, few have left as distinct a mark as Carl Reiner, whose career was celebrated with his induction into the Television Academy Hall of Fame and the Mark Twain Prize for Comedy. His journey paralleled that of Brian Keith, who, despite an early start in acting, only graced the silver screen at the age of 31 after honing his craft in theater and radio. Theodore Bickle shared the stage with legends, being the first to publicly perform Bob Dylan's Blowin' in the Wind outside of Dylan himself. These artists brought depth and diversity to their roles, leaving a lasting impression on audiences and the industry alike. In the midst of Cold War tensions, a film emerged that brought a comedic twist to the fears of the time. Among its cast was Eva Marie Saint, known for her collegiate affiliation with Delta Gamma Sorority. Adding to the international flair, John Philip Law contributed his linguistic skills, speaking Italian, Spanish, French, and German. Brian Keith, another key actor, was no stranger to standing up for creative integrity, having previously challenged CBS executives on their content suggestions for his show, The Westerner. This ensemble brought to life a story that humorously captured the era's anxieties while showcasing the talents of a diverse cast. In the early 1960s, Michael J. Pollard shared the stage with notable actors like Dick Van Dyke and Cheetah Rivera in the Broadway hit Bye Bye Birdie, where he portrayed Hugo. Meanwhile, Carl Reiner, who later became known for his comedic roles, donned a hairpiece for his appearance in this film. Alan Arkin, who had a significant role in the film, was initially considered for a part in Ocean's Eleven, but eventually stepped down, leading to Reiner taking his place. Arkin's talent was recognized with a Tony Award for his performance in a play that was inspired by Reiner's life, showcasing his skill on the stage before making a mark in film. In the world of entertainment, the journeys and achievements of actors often intersect with their roles in various projects. Jonathan Winters, a notable actor, completed his voice work for a popular animated sequel just days before his passing. Meanwhile, Johnny Whittaker, recognized for his role as a young protagonist in a classic musical film, also shared the screen with Jodie Foster in two separate movies, leading to a clothing line named after his character. Additionally, Brian Keith, another esteemed actor, had to decline a significant role due to his commitment to a beloved television series. These instances highlight the diverse paths and decisions that shape an actor's career. In the landscape of American comedy, Jonathan Winters stood out as a unique figure, but contrary to what some might think, he was not kin to Shelley Winters. Both shared a similar physical presence and crossed paths professionally. But their connection ended there, with Shelley's true last name being Shrift. Alan Arkin, another notable actor, had a moment of candid reflection about his career choices, particularly regarding his role in Freebie and the bean which he took on out of financial necessity. 
Meanwhile, Brian Keefe, known for his rugged persona, had family roots tracing back to Indiana through his father, Robert Keefe. These individual stories from the cast add depth to the understanding of the film's background and the personal journeys of its actors. In the midst of Cold War tensions, a Russian submarine finds itself stranded near a small American town, its name translating from Cyrillic to octopus. Meanwhile, Eva Marie Saint, a notable alumna of Bowling Green State University, saw the theater there named in her honor decades after her graduation. Adding to the film's distinction, Alan Arkin stands out as the sole actor to have portrayed Inspector Clouseau and received a competitive Academy Award, distinguishing him from his peers in the industry. Brian Keith, a prominent actor, had his career aspirations put on hold due to the outbreak of World War II. Despite this interruption, he pursued his passion for acting, a path also walked by his father. In his personal life, Keith was married to Judy Landon, an actress and dancer. Their marriage lasted 15 years before ending in divorce on May 2, 1969. In a notable scene where characters Walt Whitaker and Alice Foss are bound and facing each other, the word courage is exchanged. This moment mirrors an earlier film where Carl Reiner, who portrays Walt, is involved in a similar call for bravery. In a clever nod to personal connections, the Whitaker family's first names in the film pay homage to Walt Rostow's family, a friend of director Norman Jewison and the national security advisor under President Johnson. The casting of Johnny Whitaker was influenced by his rapport with Brian Keith during the filming, leading to Whitaker's subsequent role as Keith's nephew in the television series Family Affair. Meanwhile, Michael J. Pollard's role in the film came after an unexpected turn in his career when he replaced Bob Denver on the show Dobie Gillies, only to be written out upon Denver's return after being exempted from military service. In the face of adversity, actors often find strength and passion for their roles. Brian Keith, despite an eye injury during a later television series, found joy in his work, reflecting the dedication actors have to their craft. Theodore Bickle's final resting place is at Hillside Memorial Park, a testament to his life and career. Jonathan Winter's comedic journey began with a simple twist of fate involving a lost wristwatch, showcasing how unexpected events can lead to significant life changes and opportunities. These instances from the lives of the cast members highlight the unpredictable nature of life and careers in the entertainment industry. In the backdrop of the Cold War, the film featured John Philip Law, whose brother, Thomas Law, had notable connections with prominent figures in the music industry, such as Bob Dylan. This relationship was highlighted in a 1987 publication that captured the essence of the 60s. Theodore Bickle, another actor in the film, was recognized for his theatrical talents, earning Tony Award nominations for both a dramatic role in The Rope Dancers and a musical performance in The Sound of Music. Beyond his artistic endeavors, Bickle was politically active, supporting John F. Kennedy during the 1960 presidential campaign. These elements combined to bring a unique depth to the film's production and its cast background. <laughs>